conversation with someone where you end up at the phrase, man, there are a lot of different ways to make a living, and I never would have thought of that. Well, our next guest kind of falls into that category. Andre Dubois with World Class Athletic Surfaces joins us right now. It's a company that is based in Leland, Mississippi. And, Andre, I feel like when you go to the ballpark, when you go to a stadium, there are sights and sounds and smells that you take in, and you don't really question how they got there, right? I mean, you you you, you see the smoke and you smell it at a concession stand, and you're like, okay, yeah, they got the burgers over there, and you see that the grass has been cut on the field, and you know that somebody mowed the grass. I don't know if anybody ever stops to think about where did they get all that paint? How did they get the numbers and the lines all to be straight? But isn't that where you guys come in? That's exactly right. That's that's where we come into play with the the way the field looks, the design, the end zones look, the midfield, the colors, the white line, the numbers, hash marks, and all that kind of good stuff. It's something that we take for granted every time we go into a football stadium or a baseball stadium. The lines are straight. The numbers are there. Somebody painted them on. But I don't know that any of us feel like we could just go out there and do it ourselves. So let, let's talk first about your company and how this started. You guys have been in business, I, I think, for over 30 years. So take me back to the the beginning of world-class athletic services. All right. Yes, we've been in business for 35 years now. Um, my big brother, Todd Dubois, is the owner of World Class Family Business. And it, it kind of started out in a really – weird way because uh we come from a tennis background uh trial played tennis he started out at Ole Miss played a one year at Jackson State and then went over to Bell Haven College um where at that time there was um four of the seven guys that were on the tennis team were all number one players from different countries around the world <laughs> and they ended up winning national championship there at Bell Haven that year, um, which, you know, just kind of boosted all of them off. Um, so needless to say, Charles love is tennis and he moved to Texas selling tennis courts for the largest tennis court and track building company in the world at the time. Um, okay. and, they kind of showed him what they did and how to do stuff. And he went on a selling spree and within about a year and a half, two years, he called and said, Andre, I need you to come out here. I need you to start learning how to build tennis courts. I think we're going to make a hell of a living at this. Um, so I did, I I was a tennis player myself. Um, and didn't think I would have to go to college classes when I was going to college. And after a short little while there, they said they didn't need my company there. (laughs) <laughs> and so I left, headed to Houston, Texas, to start building and surfacing tennis courts. And um, that's kind of how this all got started. And um, after about 10 years, we traveled all over the world building Olympic running tracks and running tracks all across the country at universities and, and everywhere and building tennis courts for all kind of famous and rich people in and out of the country. And um, after about uh, Trial was there 15 years. He looked up, and uh, I got stationed in Oklahoma City. Uh, he was out of Dallas and Oklahoma City at that time, and he looked up and said, I'm ready to go home. And uh, the two gentlemen that owned that company had become like a, a second father to us, um, really just hands-on guys. And so as Trial's going away present from them, they gave him the formula to their tennis court paint, which they said, look, you know, go back to Mississippi, make tennis court paint, do tennis courts. He said, just, you know, just don't kill us in Texas. And so that's when truck came back to Mississippi and started doing tennis court paint. And, um, one thing led to another. And Brian Haydad would probably like this is, Mississippi State was getting ready to play Alabama on a Saturday football game, and Mississippi State's paint was coming up from the East Coast at that time. And the trucking company that they that hauled their paint uh, went on strike, and all of their paint was in a warehouse on the East Coast, and they were not going to be able to get one drop. And 
Tra had just got through doing some tennis courts up there for the varsity tennis team at Mississippi State. So the guy there knew Tra and had gotten to be friends with him and called him and said, look, I'm in a really bad spot here. Is it anything we could do to get paint for our football fields? And Tra said, i tell you what you do. Load up every color maroon you got, helmets, pads, shirts, flags, you know, everything you got with your color on it and bring it down and, and we'll see what we can do. And all in about three and a half days, they came up with a maroon and they, of course, we had white from white lines on tennis courts. And that guy went back, painted his football field, painted the end zones like normal in his midfield. And that Saturday after that football game, that night, the AD back then called Bart and said, Bart, I don't know what you did to the football field, but whatever you do, don't ever change it. It looked better than it's ever looked. Wow. And that was the starting of world class on the football division side. So, so what year was that? Andre, that was in. You no, know, oh boy, you're killing me now. Um, that was thirty. Well, I, I'm gonna say, let me say it like this: that was thirty-four and a half years ago. Let me put okay. it that way. So that was I was still in Oklahoma City doing tennis courts at the time, and Trot came back and was just trying to get kicked off. You know, making a little tennis court paint, going out surfacing courts, and you know that kind of stuff. Um, All right, so we're talking and late then, 80s, and by happenstance, you guys end up supplying the paint for an SEC football stadium, and they liked it, and so they're going to keep going. So how do you yeah, then grow it, 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 from it, – it, It's, it's kind of funny. In that industry, you know, all of these stadium managers and turf guys – you know, they're they're not normally at the school that they went to. You know, there's a, back then there wasn't but a couple of turf schools in the country, Auburn and Mississippi State. Um, and so, you know, everybody that took these uh, turf courses and all this stuff, they all had to work under somebody and then branch out. And so, you know, 30 years ago, you know, they were going through this stuff and they would branch out and get these jobs at baseball fields or junior colleges or college stadiums or whatever. And um, so all of those kind of guys really were buddies and friends and they weren't, you know, this is my school and everything. And so they all talked to each other. And after that weekend, Bart at Mississippi State called, which was a guy that worked under him that was at Alabama, and said, buddy, I, I, look, you need to try this paint right here. I, I'm telling you, what we've been using, it, it's gonna, it, you're gonna, it's just not going to believe the difference. And that guy at Alabama actually called Traw that Tuesday, the next Tuesday and said, look, is there any way you can bring me some paint over here to try? And Traw said, shoot, yeah, I'll, I'll be there first thing in the morning. And so he did, and he went there and took them some, and they tried it and loved it, and and then South Carolina jumped on board, and it, you know, and it, it just started blowing up so fast, and you know, it, it wasn't but you know a, a matter of probably four to five years we had every team in the SEC back then, and still do, but um, and so, so in a short period of time, all these turf guys. They'll stay under somebody like Brandon at Mississippi State now, and then yeah. somebody sees how good a job they do because Brandon's gotten field of the year a couple of different times in the last six or eight years, which is a major ordeal. And so somebody calls and says, look, I, I'd like your assistant to come to my school, wherever it is. And so that guy jumps up and runs and gets another job at you know North Carolina State or wherever it may be. And the next thing we know, he's taking us and our paint with us. That's incredible. So when a school orders paint from you guys, they order, order enough paint to last the entire season? or It, 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 it depends on it is, uh, who it is, Borky. You know, it depends on how much room, how big a paint room they have for their for their field and all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, your Alabamas and your big schools, your Penn States, and, you know, a lot of your bigger schools uh, will order a truckload because they have the room to hold it. Yeah. Um, you know, 
you've got, I mean, you've got NFL teams, the Green Bay Packers and the Miami Dolphins that order three pallets at a time because that's all the paint they can hold in their paint room. So, you know, we send paint to them eight times a year during that wow. springtime and, and then on into the football season, you know. All right, Andre, can you hang on for a second during the break? i got a couple other questions I want to ask you. Sure, sure, we'd love to. All right, we got to take a time out. Got to face one line with our guest, Andre Dubois from World Class Athletic Services. I'm going to try and recap quickly in case you missed the first part of the interview. From playing college tennis to being a world class tennis court installer to saying, I've had enough, I'm going back home, getting a recipe for paint for tennis courts, filling in in a pinch when Mississippi State needed paint for its football field, to supplying the paint for all 14 SEC schools, a whole bunch of teams in the NFL, and every Major League Baseball team. Andre, is that a fair summary so far? Yep, uh, outside of a lot more than just SEC football teams. Okay. Well, I don't, yep. I don't want to uh, I don't want to short you at all. I do want to <laughs> ask you about a different part of your business, though. So it's one thing to paint numbers and paint lines. And, and kind of create the stencils that people need for that. But what about when uh, field crews want to get a little more creative, when they want to put a conference logo on the field, or when they want to do a specialty logo at midfield, or when the NFL wants its great big Super Bowl logo to be painted perfectly at midfield? How does that happen? Well, you know, we start with the artwork from schools, whoever they may be, or Major League Baseball or the NFL properties or, you know, who are, or even to a high school, you know, um, and, and they will shoot us some artwork and say, hey, you know, I want to put this behind the home plate or I want to put this in the midfield or I want to put this on the 25-yard line or in the end zone. Can you fit it in there and tell me the size and, and give me some figures and, you know, paint quotes and, and go from there? Uh, and so that that's kind of how that process starts. And then we probably have, um, by no shadow of doubt, uh, the best stencil department in the world. Um, Richard Cross, I, I think he might know Scott Cox. Um, he's part of the family that is my uh, brother's stepson, and uh-huh. he's been at world class. I've been there 22 years. Scott's been there 23 and a half. Um, as soon as he left Ole Miss, uh, he came back and started working on stencils and doing that process. And now, you know, it's gotten to where it's such a fine tuning project because Scott's, I mean, we've done everything from rock concerts from Rolling Stone concerts to John Mayall concerts in the park in New York to 24 Super Bowls since this last one to countless high schools that say, look, all I've got is $400. Can I get something put on my field to, you know, he's gotten to where he, he's just got it to a T and can design and bring it straight to them. And, and the, everybody loves it. So let's use the the Super Bowl midfield logo as an example. They say this is the logo that we're going to use, and they send it to you, and then you guys take that logo and turn it into a life-size stencil template. Is that right? And that that they lay out flat on the field. And what what happens then? I mean, is it like paint by number at that point? No. Well, kind of the process is when my brother started the stencil side of world class, because that was about three years after we, he started doing the paint. Um, he came up with this, you know, it it was so many, when you get to bowl games and you do like the armed forces bowl or any bowls, they get to where they're so complicated and they're small and they crunch them and it's nine colors or 14 colors and somebody lays it down, and they just look at it and go, oh, Lord, I don't know where to start. So what Trod decided he wanted to do is, is he said, I want to make this idiot-proof. I, hmm. I, want to, I want to cut this stencil out. I want to lay it down, and I want to paint it exactly the way it's going to look on their football field. That way, and then we cut half moons and all the lines and all the colors. And once you get your stencil and you lay it out, every 
portion of that stencil has a color. So when you paint that color in those half moons and you pick it up, all you do is fill in the dots. And that's what makes it so simplified and, and idiot proof, to be honest with you. That's incredible. And and so most of the bowl games that are out there, you, you guys supply the stencils for their, their field artwork? We, out of this last uh, year, it was kind of chaotic, you know, and they added, you know, I don't know, I can't remember if they added five or six or seven uh, new bowl games. But out of the, I think it was right a little above 40 bowl games last year, we did 36 of them. That's incredible. And now I, I will say, most of it, all of it was stencils for sure, and I think we did 26 of them, for, and it was all the paint. Andre, congratulations on just an incredible business.